we're on. Good evening YouTube, XR2708 back again with another video, accompanied by me, by my sidekick James, who you've heard me talk about in uh, many a video over the last few months at least, yep. I should think. So I am real, I am actually real. <laughs> exactly, although you were on a thumbnail weren't you? Yes, yes, uh, yes. A month or so ago. But so, now you can uh, prove that it was in fact Exactly, me. he is real. <laughs> So yeah, as um, as I mentioned before, we're looking at doing a, a series covering horror movies and um, non-horror movies. So James is massively into both. Yep. Uh, as you can see, he's got his Halloween t-shirt. I've got my They Live t-shirt on today. Um, and we're possibly having another guest joining us in a couple of episodes time. Yep, hopefully so. So... Connor, if you're watching, I know you've just subscribed to my channel. If you've actually checked your messenger from yesterday, which, <laughs> knowing him, he probably hasn't checked yeah, his no. messenger yet. But, uh, yeah, we thought we'd we'd kick off episode one with our, uh, our top ten horrors. So, over the last few weeks, we've been racking our brains, coming up with a top ten, changing the top ten. But what we've done, we've kept it secret from each other. So James doesn't know what I've picked. I don't know what he James has know picked. What I've picked. So it's going to be an interesting one. So we're probably going to aim for this to be about an hour or so long. Uh, we'll probably talk random shit in between. Um, but, I mean, you can start off, actually, if you want, James, telling people how we met. Yeah, so um, many, many moons ago, when I was young, fresh-faced, and didn't look like this, uh, I used to work in the local he's, C he's 20 years younger than me <laughs> really <laughs> I used to work in the local CEX and uh, I, do, I don't know like just I, I worked there for a while and you weren't you didn't sort of show up but then eventually you did you, the dark shadow of you did cast <laughs> cast upon the shop it's only a small and, shadow <laughs> but no uh, like you did start coming to the shop you started buying a few things and it just turned into a thing of you would buy stuff that I would realise and then we just started having a conversation where it was, oh yeah, like uh, I like, uh, for example, just said Dawn of the Dead. Oh yeah, I've seen it. You like George Romero, and it just yeah. snowballed down to where we would like, where we would just talk and talk and talk, and then it got to first name basis and just developed into a friendship. And yeah. that was that was a good. I mean, I haven't worked for, I, was, I think I started when about six seven years ago, so. It's yeah. been a long, long time. Exactly, and then you moved over to uh, cash generators. I have. I, ch I changed. Uh, I went. I went from one uh, one DV like one text seller to another. Yeah. And uh, thank thankfully, I still see you because you ventured to both. So yeah, exactly. No matter where I go, he won't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. In, in some states, that's uh, stalking, isn't it? Yeah. I, I keep trying, but the police won't listen. <laughs> but no, uh, like I've I've known you for a long time. We're good friends. We we. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we talk all the time, don't we, on Messenger? And if if I get bits, I mean, James watches my videos. Um, every now and again, I'll, uh, I'll I'll say, oh, I, I need to show you what I've picked up, and he's like, no, no, I'll well, watch it on video, and yeah, I'll send him a I'll picture anyway. And even when I was recently unwell, Marcus Blessing was constantly making sure I was okay, messaging me nearly every other day, saying, make sure checking that I hadn't died. Yeah, exactly, so... and finding out what movies he's been watching while he's been laid up in bed, yeah. so <laughs> making the most of the opportunities. So, but yeah, I, I, I even came to your engagement party, didn't you I? You did, so, you did. You know, and from... I was very thankful that you and uh, the family could come. Yeah, yeah. So from, you know, just going into a into a local CEX and... Developed um, into something beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the, I've mentioned Connor as well. And, you know, that's kind of gone along the same thing. He's massively into his movies. I think he actually teaches film, doesn't he, at um, the local college? I'm not sure on that one. I haven't spoken yeah, to him in yeah, a while. I think he does. But yeah, again, just going into the local CEX, him seeing the movies on by and we talk about them and, you know, we've become good friends as well. So And then, of course, yeah. when I was working there, Connor worked with me. Yeah, so, you know Connor well so as well. It's, it's, I mean, you know Connor better than I do. Yeah, so, so it all yeah. works in. Yeah, so one of those. So there's no new faces, but there is new faces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, the, 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 the story as well we were on about the other day was... Um, when I was trading in all those oh, yes. I'll, uh, yeah. special I'll editions tell this one. and stuff. So basically what happened was Marcus was going through a bit of like a whole personal thing where he needed to get rid of some things to move and all this and that and the other. So yeah. he decided to bring in his collectibles such as like his 
um, his arrow sets, his big box Four, sets, the four K box sets, beautiful, tools, beautiful yeah. box sets that like, and then there was how many ones did you bring in? There was like well, two it, big it was between stuff. it was between your store and one the, of the, the one of the, the local Peter Lee store, yeah. Um, so yeah, we had these big bags brought in, and obviously these were high end items. Like I mean, you I think you rinsed us for quite a lot of money. It, but, but well, between the two stores, it, it was a good few grand in the end. I had yeah. these 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 huge stacks of collectibles, including I think nearly the entire Shameless run at the time. Yeah, the yellow cases, and um, it ended up where these it came in, and then you brought more in, and we had an email one day. And it just said alert, and basically we used to get these. <laughs> we used to get these alerts of like potential shoplifters, people people who were there snatched phones. But we also had ones that would come in for people that would trade in uh, potentially stolen items and potentially <laughs> items that were being very suspicious. So we had an email that just said basically keep a lookout in the northeast between these stores. Just we've had a gentleman come in, and uh, and it just listed the customer number. And it just said, traded in a lot of high-end Blu-rays, um, has took quite a lot of money out of the stores, need to make sure that procedures are being done to make sure that these aren't stolen. <laughs> and I copied and pasted the little the little customer number, and this man's name popped up on the system. <laughs> and and I was like, oh yeah, definitely a thief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you, you, you're talking the, the big um, CX, you know, proper drawstring bags. Um, and bags for life, and probably between the store that James was at and the Peter Lee store, I think I probably took about 25 to 30 bags of Blu-rays, 4Ks, special edition box sets, and all of that sort of thing. Like I say, it was the time I needed to move from where I was, personal circumstances were changing, um, and I thought, yeah, let's go down the... Um, the streaming route and clear out my collection and as you guys have seen since the new year I'm looking to get it all back again circumstances change collections grow James is always um, you know let me know when he goes to CX branches you know up at Newcastle and places like that and if there's any nasties I'm after or whatever he very kindly picks them up for me and brings them across so there's what three or four on there shelf there that you've picked up for me always keep a lookout uh, over the last few months and he's brought me in a couple of nice bits today which um i'll share with you in a um in a pickups video in the next week or so so a nice um necker figure i won't say which one it is um a couple of horror books and a arrow box set so Looking forward but, to... But basically, when I get rid of things, they filter through you and then they go to other places if you yeah. don't catch them. Because, I mean, James, as you can probably gather, was a collector himself, so you've still got a few bits, I've told you, if you I do, ever... I do, I do still buy box sets every now and then. I mainly yeah. get, like, uh, multi-film box sets now, so um, the, the one that I want at the moment is the Coffin Jaw box set by our own and things like that. There's a... Another box set I'm after, which is the complete works of Alan Clark, who was a director for the BBC. I prefer that when it's like loads of films in one box set, yeah, uh, rather than buying individual releases. Now I do still buy the occasional like BFI and things like that, depending if it's something that I really, really want. Yeah, but I've kind of moved on to buying. Yeah, oh, you oh, passed me over, didn't you? That Mulholland Drive, which I haven't yeah, watched. Yeah, the criteria. So. I had Criterions at one point. Yeah. Yeah. But I now collect old Empire and Edge Gaming magazines, which yeah. I prefer a lot more. Which is so. filtering through to me as well. So <laughs> I, I said to James, messaged me the other day and showed me a couple of um, um, horror advertisements for, I think it was Halloween. It was Halloween on VHS, yeah. Audition on VHS, and then Halloween on uh, a Woolworths advert on DVD. Coming on DVD for the first time, wasn't for it? For 25 99 Yeah, so, yeah, James is massively into collecting the Empire magazine, so we, we, we've struck a deal between us, and, you know, I've said I'll keep an eye out for any Empire. Give James first refusal if he needs any. And then if I get um, any duplicates. Yeah, if, if you get them. any bulk lots then I'll have them as you know reading material for here in the movie room so there and we go that. so that's, that. that's your backstory now let's get to the actual video yeah let's get to the <laughs> the point of the video which was our top 10 horrors uh, of all time so this has been a really difficult list to put together like I say it's been one of those titles have been chopping and changing On I've and I've got 
one ghost Lou's actually just seen the list and he said that's not a horror dad um, and I said well it's a it's a thriller and I'm putting it in my horror list so I've I've actually got one as well which a lot of people will argue is not a horror but I think it is so yeah but with James not being a collector now when James mentions his I'm gonna edit into um into the footage, the movie poster, and yeah, I'll just pretend I'm holding the poster there. Yeah, exactly. It, it'll blank me out, so you won't see me for you know a, a minute or two. Um, but I'll do that, and I've got the DVDs here of mine. And luckily, I actually picked the last one that I needed for that top ten from a local CX yesterday. So I took that out of the bag, and that's in the pile there. So, do you want to go with your first one? I can indeed. So my first one, and these are in no particular order. Yeah, no, well, except. Except yeah. the first, like the last one, that's yeah. been my top ten since I was young. That, that is my top yeah. one. So that, and, that won't and I've change. got a, a, a t one and two are probably my two favourites, but the rest are again no particular order. So my top one, which was a recent first for you, and is probably if not my favourite found footage film of all time, which is Ghost Watch. Ah, uh, yeah. And obviously, the one Good that choice. Marcus recently watched with Michael Parkinson, Craig Charles, Sarah Green, and all yeah. that. Um, the reason that I like it is because it's it's not so much the film itself. The film itself is very it's it's very mediocre and the actor did it's, it's not it's nothing spectacular. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they took real life T V presenters and had them play themselves, it probably doesn't hit as much as if you were from the US or a different country. But when you're watching it as when I watched it, I was a big fan of Robot Wars and Red Dwarf. So when you see Craig, Craig Charles, Charles is in there, isn't he? Yeah. You always knew Michael Parkinson from old TV interviews and from Sun Life yeah. adverts, if you remember Sarah those. Sarah Green and... It um, was on uh, and her husband, or what whose was name, name? name escapes me. Tim? Mike Smith. Oh, Mike, Mike Smith, Smith, that was it. Yeah, they, uh, they were on Blue Peter together. Blue Peter, they? and they were yeah. actually married. So when, in the, when they're making jokes about being recently married in the movie... Yeah, like it, 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 and and when he has his concerns as well, when she's going into the yeah. rooms and stuff like that, that it's, comes across as like a a husband so, and wife bond. Yeah, so yeah. like when you're from the UK and you know these people and you've seen these people on t like TV, re like quite often, they've yeah. like household names. When you see what they've done with the people, it does really work, and I think just as a like. When you think it was a really low budget TV movie compared to things like 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 other movies of the time, like obviously you had the Blair Witch, which was ultra low budget. Yeah, they do a lot with a little, and the th the fact that like Michael Parkinson plays it very straight, like he doesn't play humorous at all. The fact that Craig Charles doesn't take anything serious, which is what you expect from him. Yeah, the personalities don't. It doesn't come across as that acting. It just comes across as like it's an actual. They're just being TV themselves, show. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the way that it's done, and like the fact I got the recent Blu-ray release from, I believe it was eighty-eight films, the big box. Yeah, the box. Of, set. That's one, pricey, it's actually. One, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's yeah. one of the ones I won't get rid of. But um, <laughs> I did. I did see it. <laughs> in... talk, talking of that, I've told him he's got the Friday the Thirteenth Scream Factory. I do box set. I've said. First dibs on that if you ever... That's never leaving my position. Or if your good lady decides that it's time for you to move things yeah. on. Then, uh, yeah. Or if I get... Or if, I get, or if my old lady makes me move on. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, like, go, like, just... When you watch it, it's... I don't know, it's one of those cosy films as well as where when you watch... I, I watch it to, like... When just as background noise, because it's not a, like a high octane every second there's a scare movie. It's just yeah. really easy watching, so yeah, that's but right. It's, it, it's really well done. I, I know a lot of people, because I did it as a five-minute movie review, um, and a lot of people commented to say, yeah, I remember this when it first broadcast, and I actually wondered if this was actually a real documentary, if it was actually something yeah. that was happening at the time. So people that lived through when this was screened originally, um, you know, they, they actually questioned whether or not you know this was acting or if it was something real yeah so unfortunately i never got to do that because it came out in 1992 and me being as you call a fetus um like, <laughs> i was born in 94 so i never got yeah. to experience it first time round. but even watching it knowing that it's like that it's fiction it's still interesting to watch knowing that what people would have thought it, it back does, then. And, it, and it draws you in doesn't it it so, does because it, yeah. it plays off the first part like it's completely serious and there's going to be nothing yeah. And then it quickly descends. There's uh, been a recent film called Late Night with the Devil, 
Uh, that loved one. it. I loved that one. Brilliant. And film. That feels like the Americans' answer to a sort of ghost watch. It feels like a very ghost watch uh, inspired. Yeah. Which. I yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm waiting for that to come out on um, physical media, and that's going. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I think into that's the collection. that's going to be uh, the one one of the ones I buy. I think because yeah. it was really really enjoyable. Brilliant film. And right. On my, to yours. My first one, like I say, no particular order. I don't even know which order I've got them in this stack here. So I've turned them spines away so James can't glance over and see in advance what I've picked. So it's going to be a surprise for me. Amityville Horror. Very, very good. So this is the, the 1979 original. So it's not the one that um, 2005, I think. The, although the remake is very good. I did enjoy the remake, but... For me, this original from 1975. It's, it's got everything. It's 79, yeah? yeah you, said, I, you said 75. Did I? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. Everyone heard it. I, I, I could have edited <laughs> it out. Post, whatever they call it, post-production. But, um, yeah, 1979. It's um, it was, uh, James Brolin, isn't it, the guy? And, um, yes, it is. Indeed. Margot Kidder. So, but yeah, super atmospheric movie. One of those that I revisit on a regular basis, probably once or twice a year. I'll, I'll put this one on. They did do a lovely steel book for it, which I used to have in the collection, which I haven't anymore. And I'm not going down the steel book no, rabbit hole. I've, I've been tempted to do that a couple of times, but then sense kicks in. <laughs> yeah, I've got three or four steel books, I think, down there. And I might have shown James another steel book down there, but they're only, if I stumble across them in CX, very cheaply. So they're not the 25, 30 quid ones <laughs> that um, that I used to pick up. But yeah, that's my number 10. So whether that's going to be in your... I will say it's not because it's honestly, it's one of the films I've not watched. I've probably watched it about twice in my oh, life. Yeah. Okay. I do like it. It is, it's pre, it is one of those very, very spooky movies. Like Especially when I believe it's a, the wife walks in the house and the voice screams, get out. Yeah. And I remember there was I can And remember this the, stuff happens to the priest when the priest is yeah. driving away in the car and it's, all sorts of creepy shit that goes on. Yeah. Really. And obviously because it was it was born out of the, the actual Amityville uh, tragedy, the what uh, the, uh, the Yeah, although I heard it was very um that they were very liberal with making yeah. it into a film. It it was quite different from what actually happened oh in the yeah world. yeah yeah um, so. but it's, it's just mad what's mad is if you ever put Amityville into IMDB or to any movie searching website the amount of Amityville movies that are now yeah like there's I think there's there's got to be at least 20 and it's insane because yeah you, you they, just, they, they, they all try and feed obviously off, off the off original the, Amityville I mean I've, I've got some up there Amityville possession and uh, no in fact possession is the second one isn't it it is and then, then there was Amityville um, 3D yeah, and then outside of the franchise, they've done Amityville Asylum and all sorts. I mean, with these, you know, they're like Poundland specials with a, a really good cover, but you know the film's going to be a I'll, two I'll, and a half out of ten if you're lucky. I watched so. one. I can't remember what it was called. It was an Amityville uh, one, and I think it came out in about 2011. It was a found footage movie, because found footage is just a weakness, so I went, no, nah, I'll just watch it, and it was dreadful. It was awful yeah. and like you could they did the whole thing of the the dad going crazy and the wife and the kids having to like survive the dad going crazy again but it was just it was awful. complete rip off just, just, yeah, bad yeah. one, so. but uh, yeah that's my number 10 anyway so absolutely love it so yeah that's that one great so my number nine is george A. romero's Day of the Dead. Ooh. Because... I thought you might go yeah, gay, actually. Uh, yeah. I, I prefer Day of the Dead over Dawn of the Dead and Night of the Dead simply because I think it's 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 a horror, but it also plays as a really good drama. Like uh, like the whole thing of, like, these... these Like, where it's Dawn and it's it's kind of campy and there's the, obviously the, there's a couple of scenes where, like, where they're throwing cream pie, uh, like the, the bloody pies and mm. stuff. And yeah. uh, the... Uh, the, the zombies' faces and stuff, and where they're out, they're shopping, it's quite yeah. lighthearted in places. Yeah, they're running through them all, aren't they? Yes, Dragging yes. them in, in like a little shopping cart. Thing. Day of the Dead yeah. is miserable, <laughs> but in a good way. It's like it feels like there's an apocalypse. Like they just there's a hopeless feeling to it, and yeah. um, 
uh, is it, is it, oh, is it Joe, Joe Palato? I'm blanking. Who plays yeah. Captain Rhodes? Um, I'm yeah. blanking on his name. He, he as Captain Rhodes is absolutely incredible. He just he's probably one of the best movie villains of all time. He's just such an arrogant dick. Yeah, they, the, 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 Dave was the whole army side of things. Wasn't yeah, it, so. it's like it's like there's some some soldiers and some scientists, and they're all at each other's necks. Yeah, and they're just what the scientists are trying to, to cure the uh, cure the disease. Which is impossible. And they because, only just want to defend and yeah, kill everything. But at, yeah. the, at the end of the day, no, neither one of them is right because essentially in day the world's been taken over. There's nothing to save, which is yeah. a bit. It, but it, just the whole thing of the atmosphere, the fact it's all shot in these bunkers. Uh, Bob the zombie. Yeah. Obviously, he's really, a legendary like, character. Yeah, like isn't a it? really so, good character. With, it, with, with his Walkman on and exactly. whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the gore effects are brilliant, and I just think I think even though Dawn's better received by a lot of people, I think days where he where George Romero kind of like peaked in terms of writing and directing, and I think because I think he sort of went like that, and then when Land came out, it went back down like that. Yeah, you had Land Diary and, then, and, then and then survival. survival, and then obviously yeah. he passed unfortunately, but. Yeah, I think after Day in the eighties, he sort of just tapered yeah, out. Yeah, nineteen eighty five wasn't it, Dave? It so. was indeed. It was yeah. indeed. But yeah, so, it's a good, been... good few years on from Dawn, which was what seventy eight. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, you are correct. But I yeah. think that's that's that my only. Yeah, I think that's my only zombie movie, and I think it's probably my favorite zombie movie of all time. Yeah, I think we're we're actually going to be doing a, a few. I mean, me and James have. Have sat down previously and, and made a note of you know different episodes we're going to do. So we are going to be doing ones like on the the zombie genre. We'll do one on the video nasties. Um, we've got soundtracks. We've got um, different directors. Different directors. You know, not just horror. So different gonna be, different subgenres. So there'll be yeah. there's many, many a video to come. It's going to be Quentin Tarantino movies and mm-hmm. all all sorts of things. So. Um, plenty for everybody, not just horror. So that was your number nine. That was my number and nine. And that's got me thinking now because my my memory is terrible. I'm wondering if I've actually got any of George A. Romero's in this list. We'll so. soon find out. Right, let's have a look. I don't remember grabbing it off the shelf. I'll, uh, so I'll look see. away. Right. Oh, next up is a staple. Let's have a look. Very very nice. Yes. I fully agree. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. So, absolutely superb movie. The opening sequence to this one, I just sit in awe and watch where it's, I don't know, what, drone footage or whatever uh, it would have been at the time. The, what was it, 1980? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It have been, I can imagine it was a helicopter back then. Yeah. I, think I can imagine it was a very, yeah. very big helicopter. So, and it's panning across following the car as they're... Going across to the uh, the overlook, um, but it's just one of those films. Jack Nicholson's character um, just slowly going mad over the period of the film. Um, his his wife trying to stand by his side and see. I, I the, the, a lot of people give Shelley Duvall a bad like a hard time on the movie saying she overacts and this that and the other. I think she does it perfectly. I think she was super. Like to be honest, the scene it? where obviously the famous here's Johnny scene where she's just screaming and screaming. It's like. Yeah, what would anyone else do in that realistically in that scenario? Yeah, but I think every... and she goes into the hall, doesn't she? Where yeah. he's been writing his novel, and he's obviously got that all work and no play yeah. on the, and the typewriter, and she actually clocks it for the first time that yeah, and she's maybe te- yeah. it's not quite all with it. Yeah, at the minute, it's so. just I think everyone in the movie, like even um, Scatman Crothers, who plays the the chef. Obviously, like as uh, to the one who be, befriends Danny and stuff like that, like everyone in the, in the movie plays it perfectly. Yeah, and if if you've ever seen the documentary Room Two Three Seven, um, that gives a great insight into the the movie and you know the conspiracy theories around and different <laughs> elements of it. Some realistic and some a bit out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some you're stretching the truth. A I, bit, I remember I think, watching so. that a long time ago. There, there, there was all the references, wasn't there, in the. Um, in the rest, not the restaurant, in the kitchen area, the kitchen with to all do with the particular food that was in and, there, and, and I was, and, and you're just staring at the screen, going, "Is there?" <laughs> yeah, and, and and then there's there's other bits as well where people are saying that there's references to Stanley Kubrick's involvement with um, with the, faking the moon landings. And... Danny wearing the 
yeah, um, the, the Apollo yeah. Eleven. Uh, yeah, jump the, the, the sort of, and I, I, I like to believe those sorts of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much a, a conspiracy theorist. So um, yeah, he believes in the more people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I what I love about The Shining is um, like it's one of those movies where it's so like visually obviously most of Kubrick's films are visually iconic he was a perfectionist almost to an insane degree well definitely to an insane degree yeah but it's things like <laughs> I, I don't know if you it's not kind of your cinema but have you ever seen Ready Player One yes yeah yeah. the whole shining part of that when I watched it with uh, when I watched it <laughs> when I watched that I was just like the entire time I was just I was mesmerised because yeah. I was just like I was just like everything looks exactly as it did. Yeah, I've, then, I've got it on the shelf over yeah, there. Yeah, and, really and I was like, film. I was, I was giddy all the way through that. And then when Doctor Sleep came out, and they had the recreation of the Overlook, and yeah. everything looked exactly the same. I was just like, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's just and some... then they go into the bar, don't they? At yeah, the end where and Jack Nicholson's having his drink. Yeah, and, and everything's there and... exactly the same, and it's it's un... yeah, it's just... very cleverly done. You can say. For the shine, you can say, right, well, what did the gold room, ballroom look like? And you can instantly visualise it. What did the bar look like when Jack was there? Yeah. You instantly can visualise it. Like, if I said the bathroom where the where the where where Jack goes to find the woman. Yeah. And you, you know exactly what it looks like straight away because it's that unique. Yeah. It's that creepy old woman, wasn't it? It is indeed, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that traumatised a very young James when he first yeah, I can imagine it does, yeah. When I was about 14 and I, watching I, it for the first time. I watch time. this one regularly and it still traumatises me, <laughs> to be fair. So, But uh, yeah, that's my number nine. So, And again, it's got me thinking, have I got another Stanley Kubrick? But I think I might have another Stanley Kru Kubrick. Kubrick? Kubrick is, is honestly any orange juice in there. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I might have another Stanley Kubrick. If you follow my videos, you'll probably know which one it is. But that will be in the non-horror one next week. So there we go. That's my number nine. Right. So my number eight is a bit of a bit, not an obscure one, but it's not probably one you thought. It's Friday the Thirteenth, Part Six. Jason yeah. Lives. Main okay. reason being is I do I get um, I love the entire. Uh, Friday the 13 franchise which is why I have the Scream Factory box set in the UK for now uh, for now <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I love like I have um, I have all the Jason masks I had some guy um, many moons ago completely customise all of them from one to Jason Goes to Hell and then I have a Jason X mask which I had 3D printed as well uh, absolutely. funny enough I saw those yesterday because I was looking for a picture to put on your um, for the thumbnail, so I was looking through and I saw your necker figures with all of the Jason masks on top. Yeah, and that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. They were, they were they quite looks cool. Looks absolutely brilliant. They weren't cheap. No, I can imagine. <laughs> but um, uh, I love it, and the reason why I love Part Six more than anyone else, um, any any of the others, is where so the first four are sort of like grounded in reality. He's just a killer. Five, obviously. Spoilers for a you know a forty year old movie. It turns out it's not Jason. So then when part six came out, they were, went, "How do we bring Jason back?" And then they went, "Wait, we'll just make him a zombie, and we'll make it like completely supernatural and science fiction rather than this grounded yeah. in reality. Just he's a killer, and the fact that he's a zombie and then he's just like he's indestructible is just it makes the film a lot better. And with them, um, names are escaping me today. With them. Um, the gentleman that plays Tommy Jarvis. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in part four, he was played by Corey Feldman. He was the scared yeah. kid. Then there was the other guy, who I can't remember his name, who played him in part five. And he was kind of a traumatised, very skittish guy. And then in part six, he's completely... He's, like, throwing out, like, catchphrases, like, maggot head and yeah. stuff like that. Like, he's cocky. He's mm -hmm. like it's, And just to go from these quite not miserable but these like like there's no humor in them to then this supernatural yeah, science I mean, they were just very much teenage yeah. slashes weren't they to in, this in yeah it's like this supernatural with a guy with a main character that's kind of throwing insults out to a zombie jason it's yeah. just a lot more enjoyable and um just the design of jason where he's like a shriveled up corpse and then he ends up wearing the mask like there's a scene I don't know if you remember it, but where he's going through um, killing these people who were having a, a paintball fight. Oh right, okay. And yeah. He's walking through, and then one of the guys shoots him with a paintball, and he sort of looks down, and then just looks straight ahead, 
and it's just those little things of humour that yeah. kind of like I've, I've got it back on the shelf on um, on DVD there yeah. to to rewatch. I mean, were, were you a fan of uh, Jason X? I would, love, would you I fan? absolutely love Jason X, and anyone who says it's a bad movie is wrong. I know. I've seen a few people lately. <laughs> I, I follow a few movie channels on um, on YouTube, and a, a few people have mentioned Jason X in a good light. Yeah. So it's one of those I need to revisit. Jason, yeah, Jason X doesn't take itself seriously. Like yeah. it, it, it's it's completely self aware, and it's an amazing example of early two thousands schlocky, yeah, like teenage horror. Like the like I know what you did last summer and stuff like that. Like the whole, it's got a very early two thousands vibe, and and yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. I'm de- definitely looking forward to rewatching it. Like I yeah. say. Hearing you talk positive about it and other people as well, it's like, yeah, I really need to rewatch that. At one. the very worst, it's so bad it's good. That's like the, the it's it's not yeah. one of those so bad it's bad. But I mean, you know me, I like my so bad it's good movies anyway. You, the amount of you enjoy movies that yeah. no one enjoys. That I really shouldn't. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like you enjoy you the some of the movies you've told me you've watched. I'm surprised had like they got made. Yeah, because they're. They're not even Z movies. They're like double <laughs> Z movies. They're way off the scale. Yeah. <laughs> they're like as a DVD release in 2013, and then no one ever saw it again. Yeah. Except you. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I think it just hits that spot because I do. It was a toss up between that and Seven: The New Blood, which was obviously the first one that had Kane Hodder as Jason, mm-hmm. and it yeah. was the sort of Jason versus Carrie with the girl that has telekinesis, mm-hmm. and it was a bit of a toss up between. Seven and six, but I think six just slowly ekes above it. So what? What was your thoughts on Freddy versus Jason? I loved it. Did you I, like yeah, it? Yeah. I, I saw, obviously two thousand and three. I was a very very young boy. I was, uh, yeah, I was. I was. It was young. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I first watched it when I was like when I was first to get into horror when I was like twelve, thirteen, and the fact it was Freddy. Like I'd watched obviously the the Nightmare on Elm Street and the Friday the Thirteenth, but then to see Freddy versus Jason. With a, a new metal, slip, mm. like Slipknot Corn esque soundtrack. Yeah. At the very end, I was just, I absolutely loved it. And to this day, I think yeah. it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I re- rewatched it again a few months ago and I loved it. It's so. the scene where they've, they've pulled Freddy out and they're in the cabin that's on fire and then the heavy metal hits. Yeah. And then they start fighting. Just, you can't ask for anything else. Yeah, it's superb in it. So, yeah. But really yeah, good. That's my number eight. Right. My number eight. All right, here we go. Lucky day. Look away again. Let's hope it's not one of the ones that I want in my top two, which it isn't. Here we go. And it's very good. The Exorcist. The Exorcist, 1973. What a year that was. I was born then. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't born for another 19 years. (laughs) I know, but you didn't get the chance to live through the Video Masters era. I know, and that's... That's that's got to be a regret, if you had any control. My my, my fiancé always, always says I was born born like 20 years too late, and I I fully agree with her. Yeah. Because I'd have loved to be in that era. But I actually have a tragedy of this recently. uh, Last Halloween, I think it was either View Cinema or Showcase Cinema had this in 4K, Sean, and we missed it. Really? And I, I'm so, I was so gutted because I really wanted to see it. Because I can imagine it looks amazing on the big screen. I can imagine, yeah. I mean, a few years ago, I went to Redka Cinema before it got converted. Um, and I saw the original Nightmare on Elm Street on the big yeah. screen. Oh, I was a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely loved it. Bearing in mind... 1984 wasn't it the first yes it was yeah the original came out so i'd have been 11 so you know that's what I, that's what I, th- I think cinemas should keep doing this whole short old movies because i've yeah. seen a couple i've seen terminator 2 i've seen like friday the 13th alien uh, they should continuously show these movies in i cinemas. missed out on pulp fiction Nightmare. That was about a year and a half ago in a cinema that's ten minutes down the road from me. I missed out on seeing yeah. it. I was absolutely gutted. But it's what nightmare. can you do? <laughs> yeah. Say, I think the likes of Showcase and whatever do regularly show a lot yeah, of these. Yeah, they do like older flashback films, cinema here. Yeah. The classics and whatever. So. Which I, I think they should do. Should we actually talk about the Exorcist? Yeah, let's talk about the Exorcist. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-three, Regan. What a good character. Absolutely, I love this movie. Um, old uh, William Peter 
Blatty. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. By William, written by, I think it's, is it William P uh, Peter Blatty directed? William Friedkin wrote the book, I believe. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's, I think that the, the Exorcist is pure horror. The way yeah. that it starts out, and ever since the beginning scene where um, Father Merrin uh, is in, is it Father Merrin? Is it Father Merrin? Is he the one or that, 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 that gets spiked? Is it Merrin or is it Karras? I can't remember which one yeah. it is. I think it's Merrin's the uh, Max von Sydow character. But ever since at the beginning where he where there's he sees the statue and the dogs are fighting, there's a very big sense of dread throughout the thing. Like you know something's going to go wrong. Yeah. And the whole thing of where Reagan starts talking about Captain Howdy and it, you sort of like you feel it creeping in and it, it sort of steadily goes up and then eventually you just phew, near the end. Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm massively into the whole like religious horror uh I, I love the likes of the omen and stuff like that so exorcist is uh, is is right up there it, it was between this one and the omen as to which one um i put in my top 10 and you made the right choice for me i had to go with this one so it's it's one i since i've been recollecting physical media i haven't brought many on um on 4k but as soon as i saw there was a i think a three disc edition with different Cut to the movie and stuff like that on 4K. I added it straight into the collection. So, um, and again, I think this is like the third or fourth copy of Exorcist I've got back in in the collection. I I, I love it, and I'll collect all the variants and yeah. all of that sort of thing. And again, I'll rewatch it on a regular basis. I remember when I was very very young, when I was there, uh, when I still lived with my parents. Um, I used to have I had a couple of posters on my the Ghostbusters poster, and I remember I had a poster of the Exorcist, and it, it was yeah. the big. The version you've never seen before. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. the, the version you've never seen before. Now with uncut, like added scenes and stuff like that. And, and I remember yeah. like, the DVD I had at the time was the cut version. And I was like, I've got a poster of the uncut version. Why can't I find a DVD of the uncut version? Yeah, I don't know which. Um, let me just have a quick look. Uh, Exorcist 4K. Look at that. That's beautiful. There we go. Just to prove <laughs> I have got it. And the writing's going to be stupidly tiny, but I can't see. Oh, there you go. Includes extended director's cut on both 4K and Blu-ray. Yeah, that's the version and you've never seen before. the original theatrical version in both 4K and Blu-ray. I can imagine that so, looks absolutely beautiful in yeah. 4K. So, looking forward to re-watching that in... I've never seen it 4K. I think this one's... It's been out a couple of years, hasn't it, on 4K? Yes, it has, yeah. So, yet to check it out, but like I say, one of my all-time favourite films, so definitely looking forward to checking that one out. But yeah, Exorcist at number eight for me. My number seven is Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects. And the reason, nice. the reason why I have it above um, House of a Thousand Corpses is House of a Thousand Corpses is quite it's like a grindhousey movie like there's not really a plot yeah it's kind of a, a you, you know exactly what's going to happen some kids go around the wrong way there's hillbilly there's a hillbilly family you know exactly how it's going to happen the devil's rejects it, it digs a lot deeper into that so when like you get to see the almost human side to the killers like the firefly family like yeah. you get to see them argue and you get to see them have fun together especially the scene where they're doing the whole tutti fruity where they want to stop mm. ice cream. Yeah, you you laugh at it and you think these are depraved, horrible, horrible people. Yeah, but you find yourself enjoying it. And obviously, spoilers again for a nineteen-year-old movie at the end where uh, Sheriff Wydell mm -hmm. is torturing the them. You kind of you get a bit like he's become the bad guy and they're getting tortured and you kind of feel bad for them. But then yeah. you think. He's completely in the right. They're completely in the wrong. But the way that the film makes you feel sorry for them, it's it's really it does. It's a really good character thing. Of, yeah, I think most people would probably agree with that. Apart from Sherry Moon Zombie, that for some reason seems to wind everybody up, film critic wise. And... I've I've see I've never had an issue with Sherry Moon. I, yeah, he's she's in every one of his movies. But at the end of the day, I I didn't have an issue yeah. with her until I watched Halloween Two. Yeah. And that 
she completely pissed me off in that movie. She really <laughs> did. But up until then, she was one of my guilty pleasures. There's something about her. Ha- ha- Halloween 2 doesn't exist, so we don't have to worry no. about it. Well, it exists on my shelf over there no, because no, it's part it's, of no, it's a my blank... Halloween subset. <laughs> it's a blank space. There's no such thing as Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Yeah. But um, I've never had a problem with it. Obviously, Bill Morsley is a brilliant actor. Has been all the way since like tech, when he played Chop Top mm-hmm. in uh, Texas Chainsaw 2. Absolutely incredible. And Sid Haig, you know, rest in peace. One of the, like, if Captain Spaulding uh, is probably one of the best horror characters. We, we might have only yeah. got him in, like, two and a bit for movies, but he's absolutely incredible. Like, yeah. he's just... He, I mean, like you say, two movies, but a little bit. Yeah. He, he's got a cult following. He's had no end of figures released. Loads of people that are into horror have got, you know, Captain Spaulding tattoos and all of that sort of thing. And, well, I tell yeah. you what, I like him so much. My fiance bought me a pop vinyl uh, of Captain Spaulding, which is in a little, a little plastic box so the box doesn't get damaged. Yeah. We've got a sticker of him on the PlayStation 5 <laughs> on the side of it. Yeah. And many, many moons ago, I went to America and I went to Orlando for the uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. And that year, there was a Rob Zombie um, walkthrough where there was all his characters so they had his car from the drag they had Dragula oh, they had, the, okay. they had yeah. the silver phantom creeps robot there to take photos of people and the horror walkthrough was House of a Thousand Corpses and you got to walk through Captain Spaulding's shop and oh, stuff yeah, like that okay. yeah. and it's honestly it's like a core memory like it's so Could so it yeah. was just an incredible experience we went through uh, we went through that that walk through about three times when we got the fast pass because I was like I need to see it again I need yeah. to see it again, <laughs> but I Rob Zombie as a director, like I'll always defend him because people say he makes crap movies. And... He, he, he's he's marmite, isn't he? Yeah. Basically, I, I I love everything like I say apart from Halloween yeah. too. I, I always say Rob Zombie makes movies to be like his older ones like Devil's Rejects and House of Thousand Corpses. They're just grindhouse movies. Even yeah. Lords of Salem, yeah, it wasn't the best, but he doesn't make movies to be these big, spectacular... Yeah. You know, he makes genre films. It's like, if you... They're, they're homages, aren't they? Similar to what Quentin Tarantino yeah. does. Homages back to movies that he's enjoyed growing up yeah. and, and stuff like that. One of the first horror films I ever truly watched as a kid, before I knew about the originals, was the Halloween remake. And yeah. I remember it blew my mind how good it was. And still to this day, I say it's not as good as the original... But it is a bloody good film. And I, I, I love it. You got, me and Ghost Lou watched it last weekend. Um, I, I've seen it multiple times. Ghost Lou, you know, I gave gave him the the choice of what film to watch, and that's one of his favourites as well. So yeah, it, it it's brutal. It, it's typical Rob Zombie, but it's Rob Zombie. It's done very well. It's very realistic as well. Like when yeah. you when you're at the beginning where he's beating the bully up and the bully's begging for his life, it's you, it's. You feel yeah. like a bit, like it just feels real. Yeah. But I, I think he gets a lot of undeserved flack. And if he, and if he does watch this video, uh, <laughs> obviously he might. We, uh, we well, won't. <laughs> he, he, he's going to be one of our sponsors upcoming, isn't he? Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, yeah. you know, and I love White Zombie the band as well. So <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Devil's Rejects for me is the better. Um, although House of a Thousand Corpses is still superb, Devil's I th- Rejects. I think the reason that it ticks over is the, the final scene, the free bird. Free bird. Oh, free, I, I that gives me goosebumps that, every time it that, comes I, I recently we re watched them with my fiance. We watched um, House of a Thousand Corpses and then that. I didn't make her watch Free from Hell because I'm not cruel. But um, we did watch those two. <laughs> it's, and... it's got a couple of minutes of uh, Sid Hagen. <laughs> yeah, so... and then that's it. Yeah. Um, but we did watch uh, and the free bird scene. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just so. I always just whack the volume up yeah. on the telly when that comes on. That that song yeah. was made for that scene. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's it. It wasn't designed for anything else but that scene. And the way that the, there's the, no... It slow moves at the very end, yeah. isn't it, when they're all there's, being shot? There's no the words thing. spoken, and, you, yeah. and it's just it's the perfect way to end it. Yeah. But yeah, that's my number seven. Excellent. Very good choice. Right, my number seven. How are we doing for time? I cannot see. Oh, where is Three the Three quarters of an hour. And we're only on number seven. Fucking hell. <laughs> this is going to be a two-hour video. <laughs> it's going to be a late night. Oh, here we go. Right. My number seven. Very good choice. Very good choice. Halloween 3, 
season of the witch yet another thing that gets an absolutely undeserved amount of hate it it does but again a lot of people recently or certainly people i watch um and i kind of you know the the, the certain people that i've seen videos of and i'm like no i, I don't agree and I, I unsubscribe if i've already subscribed so i only follow the people whose opinions i actually respect and think they genuinely know what they're on about. And for me, a lot of people seem to love this movie. They, they show it just as much love as I do, if not more. So for me, probably the original Halloween, uh, then this one, and then Rob Zombie's Halloween is my top three of the franchise. But this one, despite it, um, it not having Michael Myers in, I absolutely love it for a movie in its own right. See... So you... I like. I want to. I want to see the alternate reality where because what they were what they were going to do, which you probably already know, was they were going to obviously at the end of Halloween two, Michael Myers dies, mm -hmm. blows up with Doctor Loomis done. Yeah. So what they were going to do was then they were going to have the the Halloween movies become an anthology where every Halloween movie was going to be a different story. So that one obviously had the whole thing about the uh, the robots and the masks. Then yeah. Halloween four would have been something different and five, and it would have been an anthology. But but there was he, an outcry at the yeah. time, wasn't there? That yeah, Michael was, wasn't in this one. Yeah, it was. So. Oh, well, where's Michael? It's, well, well, Michael's dead. And they were like, no, he's not. And they went, okay, we'll make Halloween four have him back. And then yeah. three got loads of flack, and it's completely, completely unjustified because it's an amazing movie. It is. It's it's like it's almost like a mystery movie as well as a horror, like the whole where. Tom Atkins and the nurse are having to. Uh, they having. I think it's a nurse that she is. That or she's a reporter or something. Where well, when that, he rings his wife from the hotel room yeah. and says that he's not back, and then he jumps into bed. With them. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Tom Atkins can do that. He, yeah, he, he's, he's a, Tom Atkins. He's, he's a, allowed. He's him. a handsome man, but uh, <laughs> it's the mustache. But um, the the whole thing of like where they're having to stay in hotels and they're having to follow people. It's it's there's a whole like mystery aspect where mm. then they have to like. Don't, don't they make a fake identity to get into the factory as a tour to like and yeah but it, it's the family isn't it they sneak in with the family that's been like awarded the prize or yeah. whatever by the, the for the, for the tour yeah yeah, yeah. But, so um, they, they sneak in on the back of that but i can never remember i can't remember his name but the, the guy who plays the villain uh who, who plays uh the main villain in it he was also in robocop as the ceo of the company Oh right, okay. but um, yeah. the main villain he's so good because he's him. that's him. Yeah, he's such a like a, he's so arrogant and it, it plays really well. I can't see. Yeah, <laughs> are we looking for a name? Yeah, I was looking down there, but of course I've not got my glasses on, so your younger eyes might. Um... Oh god, they're not that good. <laughs> I don't At least actually, I'm not the only one. I don't actually think it's listed any. I'd have thought he would be listed there. It says Dan O'Healy. It might be, that might be him. I don't know, but. <laughs> That guy, him, the there. old man. <laughs> yeah, so. but he, he's so arrogant, and he like, and he, he plays such a corporate businessman uh, that, that you just like, like you just you're waiting for him to get his comeuppance. Yeah, but uh, and, you know the whole scene at the end as well, where the kids are sat there watching the telly and the countdowns coming on, and, and the, 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 the sheer panic from it and stuff like that. I, he, uh, oh, I love it. It's, it it's such so a, well. And, and it's an ending where you think like, oh god, like it's not a happy ending. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite lines in the movie as well is when he, they walk into the big thing after everything's been revealed, and um, the walk in and the main villain says, uh, they could think it's a bit of Stonehenge, and apparently it's got magic in it, which is what they're doing with this whole um, the buttons on the masks to do the thing yeah. to kill the kids, mm -hmm. and he just says, he, just, he, he says, "Oh, Stonehenge." He goes, "We had a time getting it here," and then explains nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just like there's just a bit of Stonehenge. In yeah. this in this factory, no explanation. <laughs> Tumbleweed blown across once yeah. he said it. Yeah, yeah, that's my. Was it seven we're on? Uh, that was your number seven. Seven. Yes. Yep. So there we go. That's that one. Well, my number six is the one that's not really a horror movie, but I think it is. Um, it's one that I don't know if you'll have seen, so I'll probably won't go on about it too long. Okay. Uh, and it's 2016. It's Shin Godzilla. I don't know if you'll have seen it. It's, I don't think I have. Uh, basically, um, 
Hidekiano. It's, it's one of the world cinema ones, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. So, uh, yeah. It's Hidekiano, um, a gentleman who made an anime back in the day, a very famous one called Neon Genesis Evangelion, which it's really highly rated in terms of uh, anime. Like, it's seen as one of the best. Yeah. Because um, it deals with a lot of, like, uh, like issues like depression and what it means to be like what, what's the purpose of life and all this mm-hmm. all this heavy stuff and then they went right give him Godzilla uh, so he makes this Godzilla movie and it's it's very strangely done because you follow the government and Godzilla's sort of a background character oh, okay. so there's a big disaster where there's a big uh, like there's um, all this blood leaks through this like tunnel and there's a big explosion in the water and this big tail comes out and then and the, the government are like, right, is it the radiation explosion? Da, 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 da. And then Godzilla comes out, and he's. The way Godzilla's represented in this movie, he's not a big, scary lizard straight away. He's like a blob type thing. Right. And he walks in, and then they go, right, we need to sort this out. And throughout the, vil- the film, he, the attacks that they do on him force him to evolve. So he starts getting bigger, he comes, gets on his hind legs, he grows four times his size, he's indestructible, he's causing radiation damage everywhere. Right. And it comes across, it's more like a disaster movie with where you're following the, these people in the government. And then it's like uh, the disaster is Godzilla. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit like when you're watching Deep Impact or like Armageddon, the, the, the meteor is the disaster that you're waiting to happen. But this is Godzilla occasionally walking through the city and then going back to the water. Right. It is, it, but it is. It's just there's one scene in particular where um, Godzilla is he finally attacks them for attacking him because he's that indestructible. They're sort of just wasting ammo on him, mm-hmm. and eventually he fights back. And I won't spoil it in case you watch it, but it's just it, it is one that's on my list. So I, I have got a couple of the Godzilla movies over there, but um, yeah, uh, back yeah. And the the scene where he attacks back, it's just there's orchestral music in the background, and it just feels like an absolute hopeless disaster piece. But so, it's, so what year was that done? Two thousand sixteen. Right, got yeah, okay. But I watched it, and I was just like, like I was like, geez, like you look back on like Godzilla versus like Gigan and all these cheesy, yeah. you know, like even the American Roland Emmerich one, like you just see these cheesy comedic mm-hmm. kid friendly things and then you just look at this and it's absolutely just misery and yeah. drama have you seen that Godzilla box set that's come out the Criterion one yeah the, it's, it's in a big book type thing yes. like that and it shows it's all of the all, all of the movies and then in the back it's got all of the discs and stuff yeah and it's all of the that's all of the old stuff from the 70s yeah it's, it's like what a £200 set it's something like that so, yeah. I mean it'd be a, a lovely display piece but, but you know, uh, know something before I left we had that in the uh, really? we had that in the uh, CEX <laughs> shop Bloody I must hell. have flicked through that booklet about nine times just been like what price did that have on it uh, yeah, at the it. time I think it was £120 and that's a bargain that was compared a bargain. to what it is now wow but yeah, but yeah um, I've seen a few collectors pick that up recently and it, it's a lovely set that's one of my probably my it's probably my favourite um, like world cinema movie and it's uh, just really enjoyable it will ruin your afternoon though yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it will. It will. Do. You'll be something like, well, "That was a lot of fun." <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a late one for let's say 2016. That was for James and my. I think my oldest in this top ten is late nineties. I, I don't think I've got anything 2000. <laughs> you've never you've so. never watched anything after 2005 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's when I had kids then. So <laughs> your, your life changes then, doesn't it? So there we go. That's my number six. Right, my number six. Uh, right, it's not going to be this one because that's in my top two. As is that one. There we go, we'll do that one next. So, what have we got? We've got. Very good again, very good. See, they, these are all cult <laughs> classics. A lot of people will be looking at this, or certainly my side of things, and saying, oh, well, they're all cliche. Horrors, but they're all cult classics in my book. And, but they're you know, people's favourites for a reason. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm doing this list because it's my list. I'm not doing it to, you know, appease other people. The, the, these are my favourites. So. So you're saying you pick that one over number four, the next generation. 
I once had Matthew Air McCoy. Yeah, I did. 1974, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, I, again, this is another one that I watch at least once a year, sometimes a couple of times a year. Um, what, everybody knows Texas Chainsaw, you know, Leatherface, when he bursts through the, the door and grabs the girl from behind and drags her through and she's kicking and screaming and oh, it, it's brutal but yeah. I absolutely love the, it the thing about it is it's the way Toby Hooper did it is he, it doesn't it's got, it's got such a scuzzy it doesn't it's not polished it's not all nicely shot and stuff like that like Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff even though it's obviously but, 10 I mean, years that, difference that's why I haven't picked it up have they done a 4k yes yeah I was, and that's I, I've stayed clear with the 4k because for me I like it in its graininess. I, I think if it's over, over sharpened and stuff like that, it's going to take the charm off this movie. Because yeah, with all its grittiness and it's not filmed like it's it's no, there's no polish to it. It's very grainy, very gritty, very realistic. Yeah, I can imagine if you saw that on VHS back in the day with no idea. Yeah, if you'd have been like, oh god, what am I watching? Yeah, like I remember, I remember, I got quite. Knock my stomach turned when I was when I watched it when I was very young. I'm just making sure that this was in there. I say there's <laughs> nothing in there. CX solve me another empty case. Uh, it's the scene where the uh, one of the guys walks up for the first time uh, to the house and the door goes and he cracks him on the head with a hammer. Oh yeah. And he hits yeah. the ground, but then he starts twitching because obviously, and then yeah, he crack, he's having the old convulsions and then and he stuff, isn't cracks he? him again, and it's just such a. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a, but the thing is about it. Um, obviously, it's a massacre. There's very little blood in the movie. That you like when the guy in the wheelchair gets chainsawed. When the woman's stuck on the meat hook, you don't actually see it. Mm. And I remember by, uh, watching the Video Nasties documentary. They talk about how these films were grotesque and they were violent and they were obscene. Yeah. And they use Texas Chainsaw Massacre as an example, and. You really can't point out much blood in the movie. It's all left up to your imagination. Yeah, but I mean, we all know with the video nasties anyway. They really, I don't think they actually watched any of them and decided it. It, it was based on what the name was and the who directed art. it and what what was on the cover um, and stuff like that. So I, I bet ninety five percent of the movies they never watched. Yeah, definitely. So. Or what they used to do is they used to grab a. A highlight reel, and it would be the worst bits of every movie compressed into a five-minute clip, and all the politicians would leave crying and thrown off. Yeah, because well, th there was that. What was it? I can't remember what his name was now. That, that he said it, it traumatizes children, but it's also known to traumatize dogs. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was all. <laughs> uh, it was. It was either young children or old people and dogs. Yeah, exactly. It's a known fact apparently yeah. that it, that video nasties traumatize dogs. Yeah, a generation of dogs. <laughs> I've got, got out my two cats. Then I'll tell you the the amount of video nasties I've sat watching. I have seen them sharpening knives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that was my ten, nine, eight, seven. That's my number six, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. So my number five, and you'll you uh, you'll be watching this one soon because it is the lighthouse. Ah, yeah. By Robert Eggers. Um, no, no spoilers as to what James brought round this evening. Yeah. So. Have you have you seen the lighthouse? <laughs> I've only ever seen it once. So yeah. Right. So I can talk about spoilers. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Um. I, honestly, like Willem Dafoe is an amazing actor. Like I, I will watch a film purely on. Willem Dafoe being in it like he's incredible and the fact that he plays probably the best sailor slash like um, like lighthouse keeper I've ever seen in my life you watch him and you like you are literally that's, pulled... that's a bit of a strange one isn't it yeah, it's he's, like... he's probably paid, played the best lighthouse keeper I've ever seen <laughs> yeah. how many it's films have like... you seen with lighthouse keepers <laughs> in it's like <laughs> Watching his performance, you could have just plucked him from like the nineteenth century and just mm. stuck him on the screen. Yeah. He, the way his accent goes, it's like it's you, you watch him and you just think you are a hundred percent every stereotype of yeah. like a lighthouse keeper slash sailor, and it works perfectly. And Robert Patterson got a lot of flack back in the day for obviously Twilight and all this, that, and the other. And people, the fact that people still give him flack for it, like 20, nearly 20 years later, obviously haven't watched anything he's been in because he has evolved so much as an actor since then. 
yeah. things like it's a film called Good Time that he's in that's amazing. There's this, there's like like a lot of them A twenty four productions, which this is the company, the uh, production company. He's in a few of them, but in the lighthouse, he just plays such like you the you the whole thing of like being stuck with this guy you can't stand, and then he's an arrogant older man who tells you what to do and you, you can't do anything to him because you, you'll get found out the second that someone comes to the island. Yeah, but the fact it's in four by three, black and white, and it has this sort of there's a, like a, a bit like the other ones like the creeping dread of like you're waiting to see what goes wrong because you know it's a horror but what can two men stuck on an island yeah it's, it's the build up and the unknown isn't yeah, it yeah it's like two men on an island in a lighthouse what can happen that's like that's spooky and you think oh well them going insane <laughs> it's like it's probably the best bet Cause, going full Jack Torrance. Yeah, and yeah. there's a there's a scene particular. It's when they've run out of alcohol, and this they pour the the fluid for the bulb into a thing and then mix it with honey, and they're basically just drinking propane. They're just drinking petrol and honey, mm-hmm. and it's just like what <laughs> cliff do you have to fall off to yeah. do that for enjoyment? <laughs> but I loved it. I think the chemistry between them both was really good. Yeah. Uh, I just I, I, I just the visually I remember when I watched it I think I watched it three times in a row like I watched it the next day I watched it again and then I watched it again because it was just so I just like you get proper sucked into this little world of so, both so of what year was that one? 2019 19 oh, yeah. yeah so but, even more modern yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's don't worry the next three I will assure you <laughs> aren't modern but uh, I really did enjoy it and it's yeah. probably it's probably one of the only movies in the past like five years that I've, I've watched again and again and, I've, and I would like I'd never get bored of it yeah so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to rewatching it actually so as as I said there, James has dropped a, an addition round of it this evening for me. Um, so I've only ever seen it once, but it was on my list to get back again, and I'm looking forward to. But we won't say which edition, and we won't say what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. So leave, be, uh, try and leave some mystery. Shown in a pickups video later on down the line. So. And your number five. Number five, right? I should have rearranged this pile before. There we go. <clears throat> and for number five we have very very uh, not what i expected see yeah I, I knew you wouldn't be expecting me to put this one in yeah, there but yeah. for me this is one of my favorite 80s slashes it's one of those unless you're really into your horror it might be one you've never heard of or you've never seen before but maniac cop i think this was was it 1988 or 1989? I think it was 89. Um, absolutely superb slasher. So, And it's got Bruce Campbell in. One of, one, of his, one of his more unknown roles. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, bit of a surprise. But for me, again, it's another one that I've re-watched many times every year. And I never get bored of seeing it. I'll pick this one up. The other day, just on DVD to get it back into the collection again, and I'll probably grab it on the um, Arrow Blu-ray release to put into the collection because, like I say, it's it's one of those that I rewatch and rewatch, and I love every time. So, what did you think of the sequels? Um, two wasn't too bad. I didn't mind two. What about three? Badge of silence. Three badge of silence remain silence. <laughs> Not a big fan at all. I, I I like how they were like, what can we do in terms of like, we have to, because back in the day it was obviously, we've made money, we need a sequel. That's the reason there's like 12 Jason movies. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, we need to make a sequel and just milk it as much as possible. But it, it still goes on today, doesn't it? I mean, we've got another Saw movie coming out, what, later on this year? Yeah, I think so, And that'll yeah. be what, 11th or 12th 11th, Saw movie? I think, it's, no, no, because I think the Spiral, so I think it might be number 12. They had Jigsaw as well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Jigsaw as well. So, but yeah, they, they they know how to milk a franchise still. So, But I like how in the sequels they went, well, what do we do? Maniac Cops did, so they went, let's make him a zombie. <laughs> and yeah. then for two, I think for two, and th- is it two where he's all scarred up and then three he's a zombie? Yeah. Yeah, where yeah. three he's undead. Like, I, you know, fair game, they brought the same guy back all three times, but yeah, it's just like... 
it just, it just goes it goes like oh well he's a he's a killer cop oh well he's a killer cop who's really scarred up now he's a zombie <laughs> yeah but yeah no, i absolutely love it. it it's one of those that i recommend to people if you know if they've they're, they're asking for underrated gems and they're not hugely into horror they like you know the odd slasher film every now and again then i'll tell them to check this one out so honestly not one i expected <laughs> Yep, it's say I had to go in my uh, in in my top ten. It's it's up there with my favourite slashes. So. Right, yeah. my number four, and we can skip this one because it's The Shining. Oh, there you so go. There we go. So we'll, see, we'll save some time on the video. So that's our first but one yeah. that we have duplicated. Yep. Yeah, so The Shining, obviously, as we said before, unbelievable. But it's my definitely my favourite Kubrick movie. I've watched all of his stuff. And it just sits above. I, I haven't seen yet 2001 Space Odyssey. You need to do that because that's incredible. It really, like, when you watch it and you realise it was made at the same year as Night of the Living Dead. And was it really? 1968, yeah. Wow. When you watch it and you think. didn't realise it was that. Far, and you see how, like, it's one of those things where you look at it and you think, he really had, like, like the, whoever the set designers and the costume designers were, they really had an idea of what the future was going to be. But it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful movie, it really is. Um, is it more sci-fi though? Than... Oh, it's a hundred percent sci-fi. Yeah, I was, that, that's probably why I haven't. It's, I'm not it's, massively into yeah, sci-fi. I, it's based off uh, a book. Who I think it was Arthur C. Clarke, and he was a science mm, fiction uh, author. Yeah. So, but I, I think I owe it because it is a it is one that's considered a cult classic. It's Stanley Kubrick, obviously. You know, the um, Shining, Clockwork Orange, and the likes. Then, um, yeah. I'm definitely you have to pick it up. One thing I forgot to mention about The Shining, which I love, um, is um, I watched a, like an analysis recently, and I always thought I would, like, I always thought I was tripping when I was watching it, but um, the uh, the way that Kubrick shot it was uh, this impossible geometry in the hotel itself. When they go into the office of you know the guy, the the main guy of, of the, oh, yeah, the, owner, the start where he's on the interview. If you look behind him, there's a yeah. there's, there's a window to outside. But as they're going in, if you look, I've seen that his one. yeah, Two, his, three, seven. his yeah. office is actually against a wall that's in the hotel. So it's in, it's there's because, no because I don't know if it was in two three seven or it's just a, a website I saw it on. People have actually watched the film and drew a map of the hotel based on where Danny was going on his bike, where he was doing left turns, right turns where the interview was held and stuff yeah. like that there's and, people and, have gone into loads of detail yeah, and, and the geometry doesn't make sense which it makes yeah. it makes even though it doesn't like it doesn't point it out it makes it feel like the, like you can the, the, the hotel's doing its own thing and it makes the hotel like its own creature <laughs> which yeah. uh, I really do enjoy but yeah so we don't have to go over too much into that because it's a duplicate there we go. So you might as well jump onto your number right. four. So my number four, and I'm surprised James hasn't um, picked this one yet, but that's not to say that it won't come out in <laughs> the next three. So it is. It is. Yep, I thought that would have been on there. There we go. The original Jaws from 1975. Yes, yes, yes. I think it was. Yeah. So again staple horror film of mine watched it many times over the years when ghost lou first wanted to get into horror this was the one that i put on for him to watch that's a hell of a choice um needless to say i think he made about 10 minutes into it felt sick and never watched the end of it <laughs> but fair play to him he did come back to it a few years later and he man did manage to watch it all the way through but i mean i'm i'm, I'm a sucker for shark movies anyway you know james all confirm over the years the not that this is a shitty shark movie by any means it's probably the best shark movie ever made um you know this the the scene when they're um diving down in the water and the head comes <laughs> out and that still makes me jump to this day there's very few one of the original jump scares yeah one you know there's very few horror movies that make me jump in any way shape or for um shape or form these days but um you know i can put this on i know exactly when it's coming and it still fucking makes me jump i remember when i uh, first watched it. when i first watched it way way back in the day one of the things that got me was when he's chumming the water at the at near the end and then bruce just pops his head up and it's and he throws the chum on it it's just before the um 
we're going to need a bigger boat line. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, they're not going to just, like, the, the, it's broad daylight. They're not going to do a jump scare. And then, boom, he jumps out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love the scene when they're all on the boat and they're all getting drunk and yeah. singing, you know, I'm tired and I want to go to bed and all of that. I, it, it, I, it's one of those classic films. That's my favourite scene because as it gets into, like, when they stop singing and then he starts talking about the reason he hates sharks with the sinking of the USS Indianapolis, which is a real thing. Yeah. And he starts saying about how sharks would circle and they would pull people down. And it's it shows how, because Quinn's played up, like, he's kind of just shown to be a drunken sailor, like, comedic character. And at that point, you think, oh, no, he's a serious shark hunter. Yeah. Also, that final scene where, like, no, spoiler for a, what, 50-year-old movie. <laughs> yeah. That final scene with Quinn's death, absolutely traumatised me as a child I love it he slides down does yes. he and he, he gets eaten bit by yeah. bit into yeah. Bruce's mouth and and yeah. even I remember the most traumatising bit it's when he spits the blood out and it's like bright pink red blood like it's clearly fake Yeah, I remember as a kid just like no no I don't like it <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those, I mean, it's shown on telly regular enough, and if I'm channel up in of the night time having a couple of rums or whatever, and I'll see it's on, you know, if, if it's just started, if it's three quarters through, I'll sit and watch it wherever it, it's at, and I'll, I'll enjoy it for what it is. So. so why have you picked that one in the Jaws of Revenge? That's, that, that I, one, that I one, wonder why. That one's got Michael Caine in it. <laughs> well, yeah, Michael Caine may or may not be an actor that features in uh, my non-horror top ten. Oh, well, there you go. So, little um, teaser. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's my... Is that number four? Yes, yeah, number four. Number we're, four. We're, we're eking yeah. into the top three. How are we doing for time? Can you see? Oh, where's the... I don't even know where it's hour and time. 11. Yeah, it's, it's, it's white writing. Oh, with right there. Case in the background. Yeah, right there. So, not very easy to see. But right. yeah, we're not doing too bad for time. No. So. Right, so my number three is these three. I would probably say these three are my top three of all time. Like, I, Whereas I said the number one, I don't see anything topping these three at the, ta- at the moment. So number three, we've got John Carpenter's The Thing, 1982. Okay. I, that is a film I can watch again and again and again and again, and I will never, ever... You know exactly what's going to happen. You know who's who. And yeah. it never ever gets boring. Like it's such a perfect mystery movie because of the whole. It could be anyone. It could look like anyone. If you're yeah. watching that for the first time, there is legitimate points in the movie where you are sat as an audience member and going, "I have no idea who's who and what's what." Yeah, who it could be. Yeah. The cast absolutely perfect. Kurt Russell, superb. In Kurt Russell, yeah. Wilfred Brimley, and everyone else just absolutely perfect. Yeah. All the personalities shine through. You, you like you instantly know which characters which. You, you've got the paranoia between them, haven't you? And yeah. all, when they turn against each other and all yeah. that sort of thing. It's yeah. Done really well. The whole thing of like, but it's even the little things like I don't like John Carpenter as a director. <coughs> he's just he's incredible. Like the little things like if you speak Norwegian, um, and you see the Norwegian gentleman at the beginning who's chasing the dog. Oh, yeah, the, if the you speak, in the helicopter. Yeah, if you yeah. speak Norwegian, he gives the plot away because in Norwegian he actually says that's not a dog, it's something else. Oh, right. So like, if you yeah, speak yeah. Norwegian, you instantly go, oh, right, I know. <laughs> I only did French at school, so yeah, that yeah, went, went past me. <laughs> I, that didn't do too well. But um, it's the same. It's just the thing of like, it's a, it's like The Shining. It opens with a, a husky running in the snow. And a helicopter trying to shoot it. Mm. It instantly yeah. sets up a mystery of what the hell's going on. Yeah, why are they trying uh, to kill the dog? It's, yeah. it, it's just, I, even the scene with the dog, where the dog is told, to, the dog sort of, he's stood next to um, the dog keeper, whose name escapes me, um, and he, he ushers it in, and he's like, well, go on then. And the dog slowly walks and just sits Mm-hmm. emotionless on its face and I don't know what kind of dog they got but it was it's like even the dog's a good actor because it yeah. just sits <laughs> creepily in the middle of the den and yeah, all very but, clever but yeah. all the other dogs are like they're backing up and they're terrified of it it's like how do you teach dogs to do that yeah but just everything and it's obviously the, the king of special effects just 
All the creature designs are absolutely incredible. And the score it's got as well. The score is immense. Uh, I'm going to absolutely destroy his name, his name but it's Enricchio in, Morion. I can't pronounce his I'll name. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, even just the, the dum dum, dum dum, even that theme is just. It is the, the only reason to watch the thing from 2011 is the final scene when that theme starts mm-hmm. and it leads into the 1982 movie because yeah. the, the soundtrack is just absolutely incredible. But it is definitely one of those movies where I can watch it again and again and again and I'll just never get bored of it. Yeah, but that that's my second favourite John Carpenter movie of all time. We all so. know what your favourite you is. You do. Well, you do. <laughs> People on here may or may not do it. There is, not a, chan- there is not a chance you haven't mentioned it. <laughs> I'm sure I have, so, yeah. But, yeah, that was your number That was three. my number three, so... Right. Number two. Literally picked this one up in CEX yesterday. Not just for this top ten, but, like I say, it is one of my all-time favourites. So the prestigious bronze medal goes to... Very good choice. <laughs> The Wicker Man, which is uh, Christopher Lee from, I think, 1974? 73, I think. Was it 73 as well? So same same year, mm. The Exorcist, and me came out. So <laughs> there we go. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. It's got, um, what's his name? It's Christopher Lee. And Edward Woodward. Edward Woodward, that's it, plays the, um, the police officer that's sent across to the island to find out. Um, it's the missing girl, isn't it? Yes. Um, but yeah probably the best folk horror like the whole thing of like the scariest the the, the horror is the people like yeah. there's literally nothing scary in it there's no supernatural there's no killer there's no the anything. whole thing when they burn him though oh yeah at, at the end I mean you know and that's it's the whole thing of like they think they're completely in the right they're just doing a thing that they do every year yeah and they're all singing they're all dancing they're all holding hands and singing yeah. It's morbid. But it really it's is. very much that environment, isn't it? It's similar to American Werewolf in London, where they go into in, into the slaughtered lamb, and you've got all the locals and there. They all and they dead. Sa- and mm, a yeah. cameo from Rick Mail before he was famous. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's there playing um, <laughs> playing chess, chess, isn't he? Yeah, yeah and he doesn't have a speaking role, but he is there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it's just it's one of those movies like. It was, it's, the, it's the little things where it's like he comes in and he's obviously this hyper Christian man from the mainland and he's going yeah. to this place where they don't believe in gods they believe in this is it a sun, sun god or like a pagan god yeah, yeah. Uh, and, the, and they have these weird ways like I, I'm, it's, I'm pretty sure there's a scene where a young girl gets a frog put in her mouth and it's told that it cures a sore throat or something yeah, rings a bell. It's in the yeah. school, I believe, and then they mm, put the yeah, yeah, it is yeah, in the put, school. And yeah. they put a dead animal in a desk or something. Is yeah, it, it's like a sort of sit like same symbol, but it's those little things. It's like I remember the part that shocked me when I watched it because this is one of the ones where I watched when I was a child was um, the scene where he wakes up and there's the the hand with the candle wicks mm. in the, and it's set next to his bed. Yeah, and it's a severed hand and. It's just like, oh right, so this is getting a bit, like getting a bit morbid now. Yeah, because uh, the the modern day version was I always compared with that Midsummer. <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, the Nicolas Cage. Version. No, no, but M- Midsummer's the modern day version of this. Yes, um, and and I love Midsummer again. That's another one that divides opinion um, within the you know YouTube movie community and stuff like that. But yeah. I I really enjoyed it, but because I've got such a fondness for this movie i think i probably preferred midsummer that little bit more when it came out so yeah I, it's this it, it's like you said the ending obviously it's completely like it's traumatizing like yeah there's no the, the door like they, they lure him to the cliffside yeah, don't they he like, thinks he's chasing he, he thinks he, the girl because the only thing is he's, he came in on a plane so there's literally no way of him to get out of that situation yeah but yeah um i remember the one scene uh, obviously I was very young when I watched this, I must have been like 12, 13, and it's the scene where the very nice lady who, <laughs> on the on the island, she's doing the whole other side of the wall dance to him. 
Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, yeah. yeah, young James was very uh, confused by that. <laughs> <laughs> he was very... Uh, I was slightly older then, yeah. so I wasn't confused yeah. at all. I was so. very like, oh, I don't know how to <laughs> feel about this. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a very good... It's very good in terms of the horror isn't in your face. It's I remember one of the bits near the end it's where it's typical Christopher Lee, isn't it? So yeah. that was very much. It was, it was very different for him as well because obviously he'd been doing loads of he'd been doing Dracula for about fifteen years at this point. Yeah. So for him to then go and do something that's just he's just as far uh, he, away he's, from... he's just uh, mm-hmm. he's just like the mayor of the town. Yeah. It's very, but he's still quite like a, 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 a like a. What do you call it? Like he's like he's like a presence when he's on screen. It's like you've got something to be scared of. Yeah. Like a looming presence. But I remember one of the parts at the end where um, Edward Woodward's walking through the town and all the people start popping up behind walls with masks on, and it's like he's starting to think. Oh. Yeah, because they're doing that dance, aren't they? That leads yeah. them into that but area. And it's as he's walking to that area in the costume, they're all popping up with masks on. It's like they already know. Like he's not fooling anyone. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very, very good Super choice. Superb film. So, as I say, I literally just got that back in the collection yesterday. But it is, oh, that's the director's cut as well, so I don't know how that differs from. I've watched the final cut, like the director's cut, and I honestly could not tell you the difference. Yeah. And it says over two hours of special features on this one as well. I'm pretty so sure this has got a really good documentary on it as well. Feature length commentary, Christopher Lee, Edward Woodward. Um, the Wicker Man Enigma. That's it. That's a filming of the commentary. Yeah, the the Wicker Man Enigma, thirty five minute documentary, and then something called Burnt Offering, which is the cult of the Wicker Man, which is a fifty minute documentary. That might be actually. Yeah, it's it's where the interview Edward Woodward and uh, Christopher Lee before passed away. So really. yeah, I'm gonna watch this one, and then I'm gonna watch the two documentaries that are um, part of the two disc. Yeah. Right, I don't need my list anymore now because there's only two to remember. Yeah. <laughs> so my number two slot uh, is David Cronenberg's The Fly. Ooh. And the reason being is it is, and it is probably one of the only movies I can say is absolutely perfect. I have watched it a many amount of times. So, so which version of The Fly is this? This the... is the Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis one. So this is the mid-80s one? The mid-80s right. one. The one, yeah, yeah not the 50s one. Because the 50s one was the original that, Fly, wasn't Vincent it? Price in it, yeah. Right. But this one is the Jeff Goldblum one and it's it's an, it's probably a near perfect one. <coughs> Just Jeff Goldblum, like, obviously he's known for like things like Jurassic Park and things like that and he's obviously he's a bit of a a meme actor now where people like always joke about him and stuff but if you watch The Fly he's got such good acting chops like he's so good in it and Gina Davis is like she's a bit like I think she's a bit like Shelley Duvall in uh, The Shining mm-hmm. she plays such just like a person who's stuck in a horrible situation and can't get out of it but the whole thing of like David Cronenberg himself has said it's like an it's an allegory for disease and how disease changes people and can make them like not human and make them ugly and make them change as a person and if you watch it like that it is it's a really like sad movie like when if you watch it as a horror movie it's a horror movie if you watch it with that sort of underlying thing you can see it's tragic how he didn't mean to, to do this and he's suffering and slowly turning into this creature and he doesn't want to but is because like, he's affected his brain chemistry and everything he's he has no choice yeah and then he starts accepting it which is even scarier because then he's like he's okay with it but like the special effects especially later on when he starts turning up the fly and then the at the very end when he becomes the brundle fly and i should have worn my, my fly t-shirt shouldn't I? I haven't seen it for you i've got it on the <laughs> shelf back there yeah. to re-watch i haven't seen it for at the very years. end when he turns into the brundle fly when it's all done and it's the big animatronic thing it's just mm. absolutely incredible special effects cronenberg is a director he's probably one of my favorite directors I, I, i've watched a lot of his movies and he doesn't really fail like things like Crash and uh, even his son's gone into it, hasn't he? Yeah, Didn't he do Possessor? He did Possessor, and he's Random. recently, recently yeah. done uh, Infinity Pool, which I've yet to watch. Oh, right, yeah, I haven't seen. But that, um, yeah. Cronenberg very rarely misses, especially with his old stuff. And um, The Fly is just like the way he took an old sci-fi movie that's a bit, that, well, a bit really campy and really mm. like it's one of those things you watch and you think bloody hell, this is like generic. 
50s yeah. sci-fi and made it into this like horror drama it's just really really good so they did a few different ones didn't they do a fly box set that had about five different films y- yes that had the original it had the fly returns mm. it had curse of the fly which they're the old school 50s and 60s then it had the fly and the fly too yeah um i remember w- there's also a part in it to this day that makes me cringe and it's when he's in the um it's when he's in the bar after he's got drunk and he He's got, he's got like the fly strength mm. in his body, so he arm wrestles with the bike with the trucker oh, it snaps and his snaps arm, his arm into yeah, that yeah. day and makes it oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goes right through me. Yeah, that's definitely one that's going back onto my pile. Yeah, so but it is it's, it, it's been off my radar for years. It so. is an incredible movie. And if you watch it with that thing of like, it's the same as if someone got like a terminal disease and they just become someone you can't recognize and it, they they just turn to this horrible horrible thing. It's like. It, the, there is a sadness to it and it does work as a drama as well as a horror yeah but mm. yeah that's my number two good choice and very surprising actually I, I hadn't even thought of that like I say I've got that one on the shelf there but it must be I mean when, when did you say it came out 86, 886 which is blimey <laughs> quite a few years ago so I, I probably haven't seen it maybe 20 years since I last saw it so <laughs> a long overdue rewatch incoming Race. So, Silver medal goes to. Not predictable at all. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Pipers. They live from 1989. Absolutely stellar movie. Absolutely love this one. Probably one of the best fight scenes in a movie you will ever see. Um, what's his name? The other chap, Keith somebody? Uh, oh, no, um, Keith David. Keith David, yeah, when he's having the, the fight outside with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Absolutely love it. I love the whole concept of it, not trusting the government, subliminal messages, all that sort of thing. I've got the T-shirt, got the tattoo on there of the alien that says obey. Absolutely love everything about this movie. For me, my favourite John Carpenter movie. Probably the worst one for me. Closely followed. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Closely followed by the thing, but yeah. And, I mean, James knows how much I absolutely love this movie. You, you have the big Mondo poster. In, yeah, yeah, in, in the, the living, living room. room. Um, but this has made it in at number two, not number one. Now you go, now that's got you wondering, what the <laughs> hell? Is his number one going to be? Yeah, I, I, honestly, watching stuff like this and watch like I really wish that Roddy Piper had done more stuff as an actor because yeah, he, like even though you watch it and it's like he's so he can't act because he just can't act he can't act and he's like obviously he's he's just floundering through it. He is so enjoyable as an actor, especially the bank scene yeah. when he's he's he fully knows like the truth, so he thinks right, I'm just going to go and take out as many of these aliens as possible. Yeah. And walks into the bank with his sunglasses on. It's just, <laughs> it's an iconic image. Yeah. And he was that iconic. He, even Duke Nukem, the game, video game character, stole his line. He did. Well, yeah. homaged his line of uh, of kicking ass and chewing bubblegum. Chewing bubblegum, bubble yeah. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> just, it's, it's, one of yeah. those, it's one of those movies where it's, it's especially the end scene. Again, spoilers for like a 40 year old movie. <laughs> uh, the end scene where he. Um, He's, he's, he's succeeded and the signal's taken down and everyone then starts seeing the aliens. Uh, I love the part where like they're in the bar <laughs> and the guy's just staring at the TV and everyone starts looking at him and he's looking around like, what? Yeah. And then the two newscast presenters are, are revealed to be aliens. Yeah. And it's just... It's... But, uh, you know, and, and, and the thing when he goes up to the, the news agents and buys the magazine and he's flicking through and he's seeing all the subliminal messages that other people aren't seeing in the magazines and you know it, it's ironic really compared with what we've got today and what goes on and all that sort of thing quite so prolific isn't it <laughs> it is but yeah my number two superb movie right my gold medal this is number Here one we go. this has always been my number been looking one looking forward to this yeah one. this has been my number one since i was a wee bear and i got a i got a dvd box set with it and I watched and I was like oh that looks cool I'm going to watch that I watched it and then I watched the director's cut and ever since then I've, it's a perfect 10 out of 10 movie it's it, it's literally flawless 
and that is Alien by Ridley Scott, 1979. There is no the movie choice. that if you I've seen it about five times in the cinema. I've seen it as I've seen it with uh, when it was doubled with Prometheus about twelve years ago. I saw when it was doubled with Aliens, which kept me up for about five hours. <laughs> I've seen it in 4K, and I've seen it again in 4K, and um, it's just absolutely... I haven't seen it on 4K, but I've heard the 4K transfer yeah. of it is amazing. If you watch it in 4K, and people will probably disagree, it looks like a movie that was made yesterday. It is just the set design, the actors, the costume, the special effects, it's just absolutely 10 out of 10 perfect it's the whole atmosphere that's created isn't it, it? i mean yeah. even to the point where they did the video game yeah the atmosphere that you know was created with that the, it's the same with the movie you you put the movie on at night time you close the curtains you stick your headphones on you turn the volume up and oh my god it draws you in and it creeps you out with something mm-hmm. chronic yeah, and every actor in it, like from John Hurt to Yafet Koto to like to, and obviously Sigourney Weaver, like every single one plays perfect in their like their roles. I, I like and I like this so much. I have every single NECA figure of the original cast and the big what he's called the big chap alien, which is the, right, okay. which is the nickname for the original alien, because it's just there's there's no, I could speak about it for hours. But um, but I've run one... out of um, <laughs> space on me memory card. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, it's just one of those things. That just every aspect of the movie is perfect. It's paced well. It's like it's it's essentially a slasher film in space. Mm. Like you, when you're watching it and stuff like that. Like the, the 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 kills. It's just just like a slasher movie. But the design of the alien H.R. Geiger's design, the design of the ship, the egg, the the face hugger, the chest burst, the chest burst is seen in itself. Yeah. It's just one of Obviously those. All done with practical effects at the time. All as practical. Well. Yeah, there was none, none of the CGI shots. All of the set. It's it's. Yeah. A bit, uh, I've got two big books. Ones like the making of Alien, the making of Aliens. I've got the Alien anthology uh, book, which is just like all the set photos and things. I've got all sorts of memorabilia from it, like little collectibles and stuff. And nice. I actually honestly, saw the third one in the cinema when it came out. Nineteen ninety two. Yeah. I wasn't even born then. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously not a patch on Alien and Aliens, but it it was all right. And... Yeah. See, a lot of people prefer Aliens because of the because of obviously like the characters and the fact that they're they're hunting them and they're like they're really exterminator team and it's a bit more actiony. But the first one's just pure horror, especially the end when Sigourney's on her own and she's going through the ship and sets the self-destruct off and you, the time is going off and it's constantly like reminding her of how long's left. You, you feel the tension, even though you know she's going to escape. Yeah. But then like the whole scene at the end where you think she's got out and she's in the escape pod, but so is the alien. It's just, it's just perfect. It is. And again, a brilliant score to it as well. Brilliant score to it, yeah. yeah. The whole opening scene with the alien, like the title slowly shown and then the, uh, the ship comes into focus. It's just so well done. Yeah, it's definitely one I think I'm going to have to grab on um, 4K. Yeah, I really I'm sure HMB it. have had it drop into the 2 for 30. Yeah, because so. the, uh, the the original box set I got was the Quadrilogy box set. Oh, right, with, okay. the, with, the, yeah. with, the, with the funky green plastic, and I still have it to this day because I refuse to get rid of it. <laughs> You're standing your ground on that I'll one. I'll stand my ground on that one. That'll go yeah. to the grave with me. <laughs> but yeah, that's my number one alien. Excellent uh, choice. Honestly, just 10 out of 10. Can't go wrong with it. Yeah, but Marcus's gold medal Here we is go. going to above they live. Remember, above they live. Right, and the, there is a debate whether this is a horror or not. It probably falls into the thriller category, but I wasn't going to put it in my non-horror um, top ten because um, it belongs. It sits in my horror collection over there. So for me. Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Steven Spielberg's Jewel. And Dennis most, Weaver. And most recently, for those people who like a bit of retro, yep. you've managed to get a hold of Jewel on VHS. VHS. Which I was chuffed to bits to get because that's for, for a 
video that came out whenever that one did. Terror in your rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm, I mean, you'll, you'll have seen on my videos, I'm picking up different iterations of this. I've got the steel book, I've got the Blu-ray, the VHS, the regular version. I'm going down the line of getting like French and Italian imports and 4Ks and steel books and all of that sort of thing. This movie, I'll watch two or three times a year. I absolutely love it. I think so, it's absolutely insane that it was a made-for-TV movie. It was, but all of the DVD releases, none of them have had the TV cut on. Oh, I didn't it's know that. It's only something that's come out as part of the 4K release. Right. So the 4K release is on my shortlist to get. Is it TV cut longer? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen no, yeah, so... I think it is. I think. Not 100%. But the TV cut used to be on YouTube full. <laughs> and then, because the 4Ks came out, and then it got, copyright it got took off. So it disappeared off my favourites list. So, But I will be picking up the 4K. But I've seen so many making of documentaries of this over the years. And I've had the different anniversary editions and all of that sort of thing. I, I just love the whole aspect of Dennis Weaver's character, you know, going um, across state, being chased by this truck that you know he happened to beep at as he overtook him and you never see the truck driver there's been so many theories over the years as to which one in the bar it was and yeah because the only people only, have come out and said it wasn't any of those characters in the bar the only so. hint you get is the cowboy boots when he steps out yeah but then the shot of the of the people in the bar you don't see any feet so yeah, it's, it's exactly but I mean like I say this falls in more the thriller but I kind of say it's a road thriller so I don't this, know but this, it, it's my favourite film of all time there's so. definitely horror aspects to it like um, I think it's I think my favourite part in the entire movie is when he manages to pass him and he's flooring it in his sports car, and he's like, he's got his foot. Well, it wasn't quite a sports it's, car, uh, was it? Well, so it's his little family wagon. Yeah, well, yeah. like his car that can it's go a faster Plymouth, than a truck. isn't it? I think it was. And he's so. got his pedal to the metal, like yeah. flooring it. His speedometer's flying, like the thing's breaking. Yeah. And he's like, he's absolutely ploughing it down this road, and then the van still catches up with him. I know because he's looking behind, isn't he? And he yeah. he's, he's got that hysteria he's laughing and all of that thinking i've got the better of you and then of course his um hose pipe on his car goes which is what he was recommended to get changed when he went into the garage at the very start um and you know that goes the car starts spluttering and then he's got to try and make it to the brow of the hill the truck's catching up in his mirrors and oh the whole you know it, it even watch i must have seen this film over 50 times um, it's and just, it, it's still edge of the seat when you watch it's it. It's just like stress, the movie. Yeah. But the yeah. fact that, like, it's just the fact that that was released on TV and then was obviously back in the 70s where they've just been thrown aside as a TV movie, never to be seen again. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But, but so that's my favourite. If, if I had to pick one out of my whole collection that I've watched the most over the years, it's Jewel. So, so I've got. Uh, timeless film that's been released in cinemas and 4K and stuff like that with Alien and you've got a made for TV movie you should have one yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it just goes to show I mean you know like me and James have got such I mean when, when we've you know James comes over regularly we'll sit and talk movies and we like all of the same sorts of movies but it just goes to show there that top ten there was literally only one one, one crossover yeah with the and, I, and I've got a feeling in the non-horror there'll be probably no crossovers. I don't imagine there being a single. More than likely, I'm, I'm. I know you've done your top ten, haven't you, for non-horror? And you've done your top eight. I, I've done top eight. I thought I'd done top ten till I checked my list earlier and realised there was only eight on there. But it's been really tricky for me to um, to put together that list compared to the horror one. So. But yeah, there we go, and we're currently at. One hour and 38 minutes. That's not too bad. We said a, a between an hour and two hours, didn't we? Yeah, so, so there we go. We haven't done too bad. But, yeah, really enjoyed hearing James's top ten. Because, like I say, we, you know, we sit and talk shit about movies all the time. But, you know, we've never sort of, like, sat down and, you know, compared top tens and all of that. So quite a few of those for me hearing James's were, um, were, were a pleasant surprise. So. I think out of all of them, the one I'm most surprised at was Maniac Cop. Yeah, and all the others. I, I knew it would be. Yeah, yeah. 
Because of all the others where they're like relatively popular or the cult or they yeah, are just famous Yeah, some people say oh, they're cliche cult yeah. horrors. Like yeah. Jules cult, they lives cult, Wicker Man's quite famous, Jaws, Jaws is gen- like, you know, not generic, but... The Shining, Texas yeah. Chainsaw. So they, yeah. they, they all fall into the category of like, they're in loads of people's top tens. The Maniac Cop, not that one. <laughs> yeah. So... But there we go, you know, like I say, next week's one is going to be non-horrors. So it's going to be myself and James again. Well, I'll say next week. It depends, obviously, what our schedules are like. It'll either be next week or the week after. But, obviously, if we don't do it in person like this, it'll be over call or something like that. So we will get yeah. it done. Yeah, and like so... I say, we're, we're looking at inviting Connor across as well um, for the one afterwards. Uh, we're not too sure what topic that's going to be. I'm sure we'll yet. make a decision. Um, and if... if People seem to enjoy it. We might even do this as a live stream. Um, so I'll get the iPad and, you know, people can ask us questions and stuff like that. And, you know, we'll interact with with you guys live. So yeah. if that, uh, that sort of thing tickles your pickle, then let us know in the comments. Right. So, That's it. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. As always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know your top 10 favourites. Um, or let us know out of James's top 10 what you would have picked and likewise with mine um, and yeah myself and James will be back with another video in the next week or two and let us know if you want me to replace him as the host yeah so it'll just be Connor and James in the next one yeah all goes to <laughs> yeah. I'll just do the I'll just do the uh, the pickup videos from now on <laughs> yeah, exactly you're not having my collection no chance so yeah thanks for watching guys bye everyone bye for now.